Hello, my precious friends. I really hope that you are doing great. Welcome to our today's class. It is our fourth and last lesson on the second topic of Form 4, which is called Uniform Circular Motion. As usual, let me commence by giving the quote of the day, which states that gratitude transforms little into enough. We shall discuss that quote at the end of our class today. So let's look at examples of application of the formulas that we have derived from our previous class. Our first example reads that a student whirls a stone of mass 0.2 kg tied uh, to a string of length 0.4 meter in a vertical plane at a constant speed of 120 revolutions per minute. We are told to take acceleration due to gravity as 10 meters per second squared. So part A, determine Roman 1, the angular velocity of the stone. So we said that angular velocity can be given by a variety of formulas. It can be given by 2 pi f. It can also be given by 2 pi over the period. So because we are given 120 revolutions are made in a minute, we can use this particular statement to find the frequency of this particular uh, rotation. So if 120 revolutions are being made per minute, that simply means that 120 revolutions are made in one minute. Because the SI unit for time is seconds, we shall find that 120 revolutions will be equivalent to one minute, but we know that one minute is equal to 60 seconds. Therefore, 120 revolutions are made in 60 seconds. Therefore, if we want to find the frequency, remember we defined frequency under waves one. We did say that frequency simply refers to um, the number of revolutions or oscillations made per second or the number of revolutions made in one second. So if 120 revolutions are made in 60 seconds, what about in one second? So in one second, we'll have one second divided by 60 seconds multiplied by 120 revolutions. So this gives us two revolutions per second, which is also another definition for has. Therefore, the frequency of this particular um, rotation or revolution is simply two revolutions per second. Therefore, the frequency is two revolutions per second, which is simply equivalent to two has. Therefore, to find the um, angular velocity of that particular stone, it will be given by 2 pi f. So because our frequency is 2 has, we'll just substitute the values. So uh, angular velocity, which is simply our omega, is equal to 2 pi f, which is equal to 2 times pi. I'm using 3.142. Then times the frequency is 2 has. So of course, if you take 2 multiplied by 3.142 times 2, you'll get 12 point. 568 radians per second. Similarly, you can also find the um, uh, period, then you use the formula omega is equal to 2 pi over the period t. So if you wanted to find the period, remember period is the time taken to make one revolution or oscillation. So in such a case, you could have said that if 120 revolutions are made in 60 seconds, what about in um, one revolution? So the time taken to make one revolution, that will be equivalent to the period uh, at which that particular stone is actually rotating or the time taken to make one complete oscillation or revolution in this case. So Roman 2, we are told to find the tension in the string when the stone is at the highest point. Remember, this is the center of rotation. Then, of course, this particular stone is being rotated in a vertical circle, of course, in a circular path. So when it is at the highest point from our, our, our previous class, we have said that the tension uh, in the string or the tension at the highest point, you simply get the tension in that particular string, which is given by m omega squared r. Then you subtract the weight of that particular stone because at this point, the weight is acting downwards, therefore opposing the direction of rotation of that particular stone. Therefore, tension at the highest point is equal to uh, m omega squared r then minus the weight of that particular stone, which is mg. So I'm using the formula m omega squared r because I already have the angular velocity. I have omega. But similarly, you can also use uh, mv squared over r. Then you subtract mg. That is, if you are given the uh, linear velocity and, of course, the radius of that particular path. So you are told that the length of the string is 0 0.4 meters. So that simply means if this is our center of rotation, then this is actually what we are calling the length of the string. So in short, the length of the string will be equivalent to the radius uh, of that particular circle that is made by the stone, which is rotating in a circular path. 
Therefore, the tension at the highest point will be given by the mass of the stone is 0.2 kg uh, multiplied by the angular velocity. We have already computed it as 12.568 radians per second. So omega squared will be 12.568 squared. Then times the radius of that particular path, we are given as 0.4 meters, which is simply equal to the length of that particular string. So then minus mg, the mass of the stone is 0.2 kg. Then of course gravity, we, are, we take it as 10 meters per second squared or 10 newton per kilogram. So if you take 0.2 multiplied by 12.68 uh, squared times 0.4, you'll obtain 12.64. Then, of course, 0 0.2 times 10, you'll obtain 2. So if you take 12.64 minus 2, you'll obtain uh, the tension at the highest point to be 10.64 Newton. Then, Roman 2, we are told to find the tension in the string when the stone is at the lowest point. We say that at the lowest point, that is when the tension is maximum in that particular string because the total force acting on the stone is the tension in the string, which was applied by the hand plus the weight of that particular stone. So at the lowest point, our tension at the lowest point is equal to m omega squared r. Then we add the mass of that particular object which is being uh, rotated in a circular path. Therefore, our uh, tension in the string is equal to m omega squared r plus mg. So the mass of the stone is still 0 0.2 kg. Then omega or the angular velocity, we have computed it as 12.568 radians per second. Of course, we square, then times the radius of the path is 0 0.4 meters, then plus the mass of the stone is 0 0.2 kg, then of course, gravity is 10 meters per second squared. So that is simply gravitational acceleration. So if you take 0 0.2 times 12.568 squared uh, multiplied by 0 0.4, you'll obtain 12.64 then plus 0 0.2 times 10, you'll obtain 2. So if you take 12.64 uh, plus 2, you'll obtain uh, the tension at the lowest point to be 14.64 Newton. So even if you compare, you can see that the tension at the lowest point, which is 14.64, is greater as compared to the test tension at the highest point, which is 10.64 Newton. So the only difference is actually the weight. At the lowest point, the weight is supporting uh, the total tension you will simply add the weight but at the highest point because the weight only acts downwards you will simply subtract the weight next our second example reads that a car of mass 1200 kg is moving with a velocity of 25 meters per second round a flat bend of radius 150 meters determine the minimum frictional force between the tires and the rod that will prevent the car from sliding off so from our previous class, we did say, uh, we did look at the agents that provide the centripetal force for each case. For the case of a car moving around a circular bend, we said that uh, the frictional force between the tires and the rod is the agent that would provide the centripetal force. So because you are asked to determine the minimum frictional force uh, between the tires and the rod that will prevent the car from sliding off, it simply means that that minimum frictional force between the tires and the rod that will prevent the car from sliding off will be equal to the centripetal force that is keeping that particular car in a circular path. Therefore, uh, frictional force FR is equal to centripetal force FC, which is given by mv squared over R. Again, we are talking of a flat bend. Therefore, we are talking of motion in a horizontal circle. So we say that for a horizontal circle, uh, the frictional force or the tension in that particular uh, for the case of a string will be given by mv squared over r or simply the centripetal force will be mv squared over r and we don't consider the mass because the motion is in a flat surface or in a horizontal circle. So the mass of the car is 1200 kg then of course times um, the square of the velocity which is 25 uh, squared then divided by the radius of the path is 150 meters. So 1,200 times 25 squared by 150 will obtain 5,000 newton. Our third example reads that the diagram below shows two masses 0.1 kg and 0.2 kg connected by a string through a hole on a smooth horizontal surface. Again, the horizontal surface is smooth showing that we are not going to consider the frictional force in that case because remember uh, one of the ways of reducing friction is by smoothening the surface. Then the 0.1 kg mass rotates in a horizontal circle of radius at 3 centimeters. Therefore, the 0.1 kg mass is in horizontal motion. Therefore, when we talk of the tension, we will we'll not be considering the masses in our 
working or the weight in our working because we know that the weight acts vertically but this motion the motion of the 0.1 kg uh, mass is horizontal so uh, calculate the angular velocity of the mass when the system is in equilibrium then we are told to take acceleration to gravity as 10 meters per second squared so the key point here is that the system is in equilibrium so when the system is in equilibrium uh, the sum of the horizontal forces must be equal to the sum of the vertical forces then of course the only horizontal force is the centripetal force which is simply the tension in this particular string so at equilibrium the horizontal force which is the centripetal force would be equal to the vertical force which is the weight of the 0.2 kg mass because it is the 0.2 kg mass that is in horizontal uh, state therefore the centripetal force of the 0.1 kg mass which is rotating horizontally will be given by m omega squared r which can also be given by mv squared over r but because in this case we are asked to find the angular velocity we don't need the mv squared over r therefore we use an appropriate formula that has the angular velocity which is m omega squared r then of course is equals to the vertical forces is the weight of the 0.2 kg mass which is given by mg so the mass of the body which is moving in horizontal circle or which has the centripetal force is 0.1 kg times omega squared is omega squared then times the radius of that particular uh, path is three centimeters so of course to convert it into SI unit which are the meters we know that 100 centimeters is equal to one meter what about three centimeters so that will be three centimeters of 100 centimeters times one meter therefore the radius of the 0.1 kg of the path traced by the 0.1 kg mass is 0.03 meters then the mass of the body which is in horizontal motion in the vertical motion or in the horizontal path is 0.2 kg mass then of course gravity is 10 meters per second squared so if you take 0.1 times 0.03 you'll obtain 0.003 then of course times omega squared or times the square of the angular velocity then 0.2 times 10 you'll obtain 2 newton so if I want to make omega squared subject of the formula, I'll simply divide both sides by 0.03 so that I have omega squared being equal to 2 divided by 0.03, which gives me 6662 uh, over 3. Therefore, if I want to find the value of angular velocity, I'll simply take square root on both sides. Therefore, the square root of omega squared will just be omega, then the square root of um, 666 whole number, 2 over 3 each square root will give us 25.82 radians per second therefore the angular velocity of the mass when the system is in equilibrium will be 25.82 radians per second again this one is correct to four significant figures next we look at application of circular motion and the first application is in centrifuge so a centrifuge is simply a device that separates liquids of different densities or separates solids which are uh, mixed within liquids so the key thing when we are separating substances using a centrifuge the factor that is used to separate them is actually the density so the substances to be separated they must have different values of density that is one substance must have a high density while the other one have must have a relatively low density so when in operation matter of low density moves inwards towards the center of rotation on stopping the rotation the tube returns to the vertical position with less dense matter at the top so for example if this is our center of rotation so these are our tubes which are rotating in this particular manner that is in the anti-clockwise direction so all the matter that is less dense will come closer to the center of rotation that is somewhere here of these particular tubes but the matter that has very high density it will be at the end at the far end of these particular tubes so for example here we are separating a liquid which which has some light particles which are suspended uh, within it so we want to separate these light particles and the liquid because they are mixed together in this particular case so this is before uh, the start of the rotation then after rotating then uh, we let the centrifuge settle so these particular tubes will assume the vertical position so when the tubes come at the vertical position the substance which has a high density for example in this case the liquid has a higher density than our light particle so the substance that has a higher density will always come at the end of these particular uh, tubes while the substance that has 
very low density, it will sink or it will be on the upper side of that particular uh, tube. So when in operation, matter of low density moves inward. So you can see the particular, the light particles are very closer to the center of rotation because this the tension in this particular string. So this particular string, the tension that is uh, acting towards the center of the, the rotation or the centripetal force is what we are denoting by the tension T, also the tension T in this particular case. So the light substance will always be end up being closer to the center of that particular rotation while the substance that has a very high density will always be at the far end. So on stopping, the tube returns to the vertical position with less dense matter at the top and of course the matter which is more dense at the bottom, hence we are able to separate them. Then the second application is in drying cloth in a spin dryer whereby as the cloth rotates in a spin dryer, the fiber of the cloth cannot provide sufficient centripetal force for uh, most of the water to make it uh, go round a circle or to rotate in a circular path. Therefore, the water, because the water cannot rotate in the circular path, that simply means that the water will tend to fly off at tangents to the circle and so move towards the wall of the drum where it escapes from the holes. Remember when the water escapes from the cloth, then we say that the cloth are able to get dry or they are getting rid of water, therefore they are getting dry. So that is how spin dryers work. Then the third application is in speed governors, whereby a speed governor is used to control the speed of the car by regulating the fuel intake. So it works on the principle of the conical pendulum, such that uh, when the speed governor allows a huge amount of fuel intake, then that particular vehicle will accelerate. But when um, uh, when the speed governor is in such a way that it only allows uh, very little little uh, fuel intake, then in that particular case, the speed of the vehicle will be very low. So the speed governor used to control the speed of the vehicle by regulating the fuel intake. So remember, the speed governor has uh, some parts which rotate in a vertical manner, that is in a circular path. Hence, the centripetal force is the one that determines the fuel intake. And of course, the fuel intake determines the speed of that particular vehicle. Hence, a speed governor can regulate the speed of the vehicle by simply controlling the amount of fuel intake. Then the fourth application is in satellites. So lastly, lastly, I have an exercise that I recommend you should try at your own free time to get the understanding of the concepts that you have just learned. So to answer this question, try referring to our lesson one and lesson two of the uh, uniform circular motion. We discussed the graphs of uh, attention against the square of uh, angular velocity. Of course, if you have any challenges in handling any of the questions, feel free to drop a comment specifying the question that you need help in. And as usual, I'm always here to try and help where possible. So we've come to the end of our class today, but we need to discuss the quote of the day. The quote of the day stated that gratitude transforms little into enough. So the quote is encouraging us to be thankful and appreciative uh, for the little things we already have in life, such as the gift of life, good health, peace of mind, shelter, oxygen, etc. Remember that, when you train your mind to appreciate the small things that you already have in your life, you will naturally attract the big things that you didn't have in your life. And lastly, recall that you will never realize how something or someone was important in your life until you lose them. Thank you very much for accompanying me until the end of this particular lesson. I do not take it for granted. In case you are new to the channel, kindly hit the subscription button and also turn on the notification bell so that whenever I upload a new video, you will get notified. Until next time, this is Kind Tuition Academy. Thank you. Thank you very much for the continued support. I really, really appreciate.